Welcome back to MIP Talk, conversations with the world's most interesting people. Right now, we are with one of the world's most interesting people, Daryl Sawyer. He's the manager of diversity and EEO programs at Pratt and Whitney Rockadyne. Without mentioning the word Pratt and Whitney Rockadyne, can you give me some examples of some companies that are representing themselves well, both internally and reaching out to diverse markets? I think you can probably look at any list of Fortune 500 companies and point to some outstanding organizations. Uh, IBM, for example. Uh, IBM does a wonderful job with respect to not only recognizing the need for a diverse workforce, but IBM is a global organization and it recognizes and it has for many, many years that in order for it to be successful in global markets, it's got to be in a position where they not only have employees who is a manifestation of their marketplace, okay, but they've also got to have, with respect to their brand, that recognition in those marketplaces, not only here, but all around the world. You're originally a Midwesterner, as am I, and um, I guess we're out here on the left coast. We're here in California right now. There is a lot of uh, diversity, and I, I believe probably more progressive representation and, and the ideas of diversity. Do you think that those are values that are reflected in, in middle America? Uh, I think so. I think it's much more true now today than perhaps it was 10, 15, or maybe 20 years ago. Uh, I think the nation has embraced diversity for what diversity really is. It's a recognition and acknowledgement of mm -hmm. all that, that represent our, our nation from a standpoint of its people mm -hmm. and the fact that we have to not only embrace, embrace everyone but recognize and respect what everyone brings to the success of our country. What is, uh, what is Pratt Whitney Rockadyne doing now to effectively brand itself and to separate itself from its competitors? Well, we're, uh, we don't sell automobiles or anything. We manufacture, right. we manufacture and sell rocket engines, so there's not a wide commercial marketplace <laughs> for... Uh, you guys for, aren't trying for, to sell laundry detergent. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So we're from a branding perspective because we do have an ongoing need uh, more so in, in, in uh, good times and in bad times, but we do have an ongoing need, like many other organizations, is to attract and once attract, s sustain good, solid, solid quality employees. And from a branding standpoint, it's important to us that, that potential employees know who we are, mm -hmm. they know our commitment to diversity, they know that uh, we want to be a good place and are indeed uh, represent ourselves as a good solid place to work uh, from a career standpoint so in a branding context an organization like ours who uh, don't have the large product set that normal normal organizations would do that's exactly what we would uh, how we brand ourselves and our, our motivation for branding. No doubt uh, Pratt Whitney Rockadyne uh, one of its largest uh, customers is the U.S. government right now. What sort of effect does that have for the amount of work that is coming your way? And does it change at all the pressure that's on you guys to sort of uh, work within the, the confines of what the government requires for, uh, for contractors? Does, is there any change with any of those things with you right now? Not really because the engagement with respect to the product sets that we have is not so much impacted by the the, uh, the wars in both Iraq and Afghanistan, as is the space program. Um, the NASA, of course, is our largest customer, and the impacts that the uh, government has with respect to NASA funding for future space exploration; those are the things that more uh, that impact us more so than uh, than the uh, either of the wars. So they have put to rest um, one of the or several of the shuttles. And they're talking about there's just there's a bit, there's a lot of debate about going back to the moon or trying to get people all the way out there. What, how does that affect what you where do you, where do you guys sit on the debate? Where would you guys like to put your energies into? Well, of course, we'd like to see a sustainable uh, a sustainable space uh, exploration program, but of course, those deci those decisions aren't ours. Can we get a man on Mars? 
You know, um, when President Kennedy challenged the nation to put a man on the moon uh, at, by the end of the decade of the 60s, I'm sure there was a lot of skepticism that said, nah, it couldn't be done, can't be done, won't ever be done. So uh, I'm going to take that as a cue and say, you know, this nation most probably can do anything it wants to do. I love it. I love it. Daryl, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> You're very welcome.